the Johnny Manziel situation, is it justified blaming someone for that entire saga? To, in some part, because you know that the Johnny Manziel saga didn't begin when he got to Cleveland. You know some of this behavior and these things happened while he was at Texas A&M. And, and in my opinion, at that time, that's when you're more impressionable as a young man. For your head coach, for people of, of that stature to take a vested interest for you to correct the course in which your life is going, that's a very important time. And I, I think they missed an opportunity maybe to redirect where Johnny Manziel is today. I actually disagree. I, the people I've talked to close to the program told me that when Manziel was there, he had a certain set of standards or rules that he had to live by. And if he didn't, he wouldn't be on the field. And I was told he met all of these restrictions. Once he got out of A&M, once he got out of a structured environment, then all hell broke loose. And so I think it's unfair to sit here and blame A&M or Kevin Sumlin for Manziel and what he may have done back then and what he's doing now because everything I've always been told is that he met these certain standards and Stallings brought up the half game suspension. A&M had nothing to do with that. That was NCAA with the stuff with the signing, the autographs and the different things that he was doing, which obviously he shouldn't have done. I think it's the easy narrative to sit here and blame A&M for everything. Bottom line is, I think once he got out of a structured environment, he just couldn't control himself.